The various generations of Ram trucks equipped with the Cummins diesel engine have been subject to various emission standards and emissions equipment since the introduction of the first generation Cummins equipped trucks in 1989. In this video, I'll be going over each generation of truck and talking about the fueling of the truck, a little about the EPA standards at the time, and which emissions equipment are required by federal law for each generation of truck. This will include some years which did not require emissions equipment as they were compliant with emissions regulations at the time they were manufactured. I've got timestamps in the description. If you're interested in a particular year, feel free to skip forward, and I'll give some concluding comments at the end. So stay tuned, like, and subscribe. So we'll start with the first generation Cummins. These trucks were manufactured from 1989 to 1993. They were equipped with the 5.9 liter 6BT Cummins engine. They were 12 valves, so that's two valves per cylinder. So these trucks utilized a Bosch mechanically controlled VE rotary injection pump, which was driven off the camshaft gear. The VE pump supplied fuel to mechanical fuel injectors which are also from Bosch. And once these injectors reach their pop-off pressure, they would direct fuel directly into the cylinder. At the time these trucks were manufactured, federal emissions laws were more lax. So these are true pre-emissions trucks. So they were not equipped with emissions equipment out of the factory. They were equipped with uh, turbo back exhaust systems with mufflers. Federal emissions requirements would change in 1994, which brings us to the first version of the second generation Cummins. These trucks were made from 1994 to 1998, and this was the first year of the iconic Ram body style that anyone who's a fan of the Ram trucks loves. These trucks were equipped with the 6BTA Cummins six-cylinder engine, which similar to the first generation Cummins was also a 12-valve Cummins. However, these trucks would utilize a different injection pump. These trucks utilize the Bosch P7100 injection pump, also known as the P-Pump. This is a mechanical pump which is driven by a camshaft and it has six different individual plungers. Each plunger pressurizes fuel within its own separate barrel and then sends it to its corresponding injector. This allowed for higher fuel volume and quicker injection rates as compared to its predecessor, the VE pump. The injectors were 100% mechanical, but they were capable of a higher opening pressure than the first gen predecessors. Despite the improvements in fueling, these trucks, if manufactured after January 1st, 1994, did require catalytic converters because that's when the uh, stricter emissions requirements took effect. Additionally, 1996 to 1998 models, California versions, required exhaust gas recirculation, or EGR. In 1998, the EPA issued more stringent emission standards for diesel engines used in non-road construction, agricultural, and industrial equipment, as well as in certain marine applications. Thus began the era of the electronically controlled diesels. The second gen Cummins 24 valves were produced from 1998.5 to 2002. These trucks now had four valves per cylinder instead of two. The mechanical P pump was replaced by the electronically controlled Bosch VP44 pump with a rotary distributor. With an integrated electronic control unit, the VP44 did more than just pressurize the fuel. It controlled the injection timing, volume, and also monitored its operation. While the VP44 pump was electronically controlled, the injectors were completely mechanical. The repositioning of the injectors, along with the higher pop-off pressure, provided a more even fuel spray pattern and optimized combustion when compared to its predecessor. Because of this, these trucks were compliant with emissions requirements without the need for additional emissions equipment. They were equipped with a muffler and a resonator. The item labeled as number two in this diagram might appear to be a catalytic converter, but it's actually a resonator. So similar to the first gen Cummins trucks, the second gen 24 valves from 1998.5 to 2002 did not require emissions equipment. The California versions of these trucks were tuned differently to be compliant with the California emissions laws. The VP44 fueled trucks were, however, short-lived, and with stricter emission standards on the horizon in 2004, 
Cummins adopted the state-of-the-art high-pressure common rail injection system from Bosch. The 2003 to 2004 third generation Ram trucks were the first of the Ram trucks to be equipped with the electronically controlled common rail fuel system. Like its immediate predecessor, the third gen Cummins trucks were equipped with the 5.9 liter 24 valve Cummins diesel engine. The Bosch CP3 pump, which is a radial piston pump, was utilized to produce high pressure fuel for the injectors to use. The CP3 pump would pressurize fuel up to 23,200 PSI before sending it to the fuel rail. At the rail, the high pressure fuel would be stored until it is called upon by the injectors to be injected directly into the cylinders. The injectors were now solenoid activated, which meant that no longer would the injectors be fired mechanically, but would now be fired by command from the ECM. The 2003 and 2004 Cummins engines produced prior to January 1, 2004, would carry out two injection events, a pre-injection event or a pilot injection event and also a main injection event. This change in fueling resulted in a significantly quieter engine operation and changed the Cummins rattle to a purr. The 03 to 04 Cummins injectors featured eight hole nozzles with 143 degree spray angles. This injection system was much cleaner and more efficient than the prior mechanical injection from the predecessors and resulted in the 2003 and 2004 Cummins engines, non-California versions, being compliant with emissions laws without the need for additional emissions equipment. The 03 to 04 Common Rail Cummins were the last of the Cummins engines which did not require emissions equipment. Due to tightening emissions requirements, several modifications would have to be made to the later third gen 2004.5 to 2007 Cummins diesel trucks. Beginning with 2004.5, the injectors would now carry out three injection events, a pre-injection event, a main injection event, and a post-injection event. This was necessary to meet the 2004 EPA mandated emissions regulations. The injectors now featured five hole nozzles with a tighter 124 degree spray angle. This was also to meet tighter emissions requirements. The pistons had to be redesigned to accommodate the different spray angle. This was accomplished by revising the fuel bowl area for more efficient combustion. Despite these modifications, the 2004.5 to 2007 Cummins diesel trucks did require the addition of a catalytic converter to meet emissions requirements. This is why in the United States you can no longer buy turbo back exhaust systems for the 2004.5 to 2007 third gen Cummins trucks. You can buy cat back exhaust systems for those trucks. But with the 03 to 04 Cummins diesel trucks, you can easily find turbo back exhaust systems. It's also interesting that Cummins does not sell remanufactured engines for the years 1998.5 to 2004. If you visit their website, on the page where they offer remanufactured engines, you can see this. I'm not sure why this is, but I can only speculate that it might have to do with the fact that these trucks are not subject to the usage of additional emissions equipment, and Cummins does not want to support the survival and continued operation of trucks from those years. Halfway through the 2007 model year, tightening federal emissions regulations would require that an even cleaner version of the Cummins engine to be introduced for the Dodge Ram trucks. The next generation of Dodge Ram trucks were produced from 2007.5 to 2018, with the 2007.5 to 2009 trucks having the same body style as the late third gen trucks, and the 2010 to 2018 trucks having a new body style. From 2007.5 forward, the 5.9 liter Cummins diesel engine would be replaced by the 6.7 liter Cummins diesel engine with a larger displacement, a bigger bore, and a longer stroke. This was the cleanest Cummins built to date. Similar to its predecessor, the 6.7 liter Cummins was equipped with a Bosch common rail fuel system. Utilizing a CP3 high pressure pump, the peak pressure at the rail on the 6.7 liter Cummins would reach 26,000 PSI versus the lower 23,200 PSI on the 5.9 liter predecessors. 
the solenoid style injectors would be redesigned to accommodate this higher pressure. However, different from its immediate third gen predecessor, which carried out three injection events, the injectors for the 6.7 liter Cummins would now carry out five injection events. First, a pilot injection event. Second, a pre-injection event to help reduce noise and reduce nitric oxide gas. Third, the main injection event, which provided fuel needed for combustion and power. Fourth, an after injection event to help burn any remaining particulate matter. And fifth, a post injection event used for what is known as regen or regeneration to clean the DPF or diesel particulate filter. All five of these injection events take place in approximately 0.4 milliseconds or 0.0004 seconds per combustion event. Diesel emissions became a major focus of the EPA in 2007. This resulted in the addition of a number of emission systems to the diesel trucks going forward. In other words, from here forward, it gets complicated. On the engine side, starting in 2007.5 and going forward, the 6.7 liter Cummins engine would be equipped with an exhaust gas recirculation system, also known as an EGR system, which includes an EGR valve and an EGR cooler. The EGR system works by recirculating exhaust gases back through the engine and back through the combustion chamber where the exhaust is reburned to reduce the amount of pollution. A look inside the intake manifold and the EGR valve in a truck equipped with an EGR will demonstrate soot buildup over time. On the exhaust side, the 2007.5 to 2012 trucks would be equipped with a diesel oxidation catalyst or catalytic converter, a nitric oxide absorption catalyst, and also a diesel particulate filter. The diesel particulate filter operates by trapping soot particles from the engine exhaust to prevent them from reaching the environment. The soot particles are trapped within the filter pores and in a layer on top of the channel walls. As soot accumulates, exhaust back pressure increases. In order to reduce the back pressure due to soot accumulation, the DPF must periodically undergo regeneration. Active regeneration requires the addition of heat up to 1000 degrees Fahrenheit to the exhaust system to oxidize the soot into ash. The post injection events from the injector serve to add fuel to the exhaust to generate this heat. In 2013, the diesel oxidation catalyst became an integrated part of the diesel particulate filter and no longer sat within the downpipe. Also in 2013, with the addition of the SCR, the NAC was removed. The SCR, or Selective Catalytic Reduction System, introduced in 2013 requires diesel exhaust fluid, also called DEF fluid. The SCR sits distal to the diesel particulate filter system. DEF fluid is sprayed into the SCR where a chemical reaction occurs to convert nitrogen oxides into nitrogen, water, and CO2. The DEF fluid is broken down to produce ammonia in the exhaust stream. The aforementioned emission systems of the late 4th gen Cummins trucks would persist to the 5th gen Cummins trucks produced from 2019 to the present time this video is being made in March of 2023. From 2019 to 2020, the CP3 pump was initially replaced by the CP4.2 high pressure pump from Bosch. This was ultimately unsuccessful and was replaced by the CP3 pump from 2021 forward. Additionally, due to the CP4.2's propensity for catastrophic failure, a recall was issued for the 2019 and 2020 trucks to have their factory equipped CP4.2 pumps replaced by CP3 pumps. So for reference, here's a summary slide of which year trucks have which emissions equipment. So as you can see from the video, the Cummins equipped Ram trucks have changed over the years mostly out of the need to comply with EPA regulation. And I intentionally used the word changed instead of the word evolved, as in a lot of ways they've become less reliable and less efficient due to the emissions equipment they are required to have. Unfortunately, emissions equipment and the performance and reliability of the truck are almost always at odds with one another. A detailed look at the negative issues with each of these types of emissions equipment is beyond the scope of this video, but with the knowledge of which trucks have which equipment, one can do a detailed study of the cons of that equipment to know what you're getting into. So when looking at a truck, there are a lot of considerations to look at, including which emissions equipment the truck is required to have. 
This is important because you will be required to maintain this emissions equipment to ensure it's functioning properly, at the risk of having the truck's computer put it into limp mode or being broken down on the side of the road if your emissions equipment gets clogged. Also, the emissions equipment doesn't last forever, and you'll eventually have to replace it, and this will cost thousands of dollars. These are just some of the things you got to consider, but it's one of the reasons I keep improving my 2003 truck. So I hope this was an informative video for you. Uh, like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.